Hi, welcome. Happy Saturday, everybody. I'm excited to have two great speakers, Devi Sri Nayak and Medina Ali. And I'm going to start with you, Devi Sri. Take it away. Um, hello, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. And then um, I am going to share my in, um, uh, in the like, you know, today we are going to. Cyber security, and um, that way we can um, uh, see. I hope you can see my screen. So, so what is cyber criminology? So, cyber criminology is a very important topic in the field of interdisciplinary study. When we talk about like um, the um, essence. Uh, understanding of criminology and cyber security and this combined together like cyber security interdisciplinary study started today we i will go over the brief and the fundamental um, components of cyber criminology and how it is very important to study and understand in a security perspective especially when uh, we are in the um, era of cyber security and uh, everywhere we go um, without talking of cyber security well, like it's doesn't any operation is not possible even if currently we are interacting through online it's very important that like um privacy um the um internet um uh, network security and then like how the connections and senders receiver messages are very very important so i'll briefly touch over that um, so first thing is my introduction. Um, so who am I? I'm an educator. Um, I am a assistant uh, teaching professor at the University of Washington Tacoma, and I'm a proud um, consider my. Um, and in cyber security, I want to step into cyber security field. Um, there are different ways. Uh, don't be discouraged if you are interested in cyber security. If you are pursuing any um, field, even if sociology, history, psychology, um, uh, and then you know computer science, information system, including business, music, physics chemistry because cybersecurity is for all it's nothing to do with like it's not uh, bounded by one domain um that's my approach because i i also have a diverse background i have a uh, criminology criminal justice background computer engineering with infosec specialization including information science so i have a very interdisciplinary background so i know how cybersecurity works in a different perspective so uh, in the present time if you are interested in cybersecurity, you have a job in a cybersecurity because it's um, it's very much colorful and every have a place in the field of cybersecurity. So what is cyber? So according to like, you know, the meaning if we look for the cyber is, um, it's a relating characteristics or any kind of culture And, uh, related to information technology, virtual reality, considered as a cyber. When we take the word, the name uh, cyber comes to our mind. So that's like, you know, we talk about cyber criminology, cyber security, um, cyber uh, bullying, anything related to uh, computers, internet, um, information technology, that's related to like, we talk about cyber, um, you know, cyber bullying, cyber trespassing, anything related like, to when we found like um, cyber and then security, cyber criminology. That's why like, you know, first thing we need to understand what is cyber. Next is because today's topic is criminology, um, what is criminology? So according to like the criminology is the study of crime and devi uh, deviant behavior. So it's, it's basically, a understanding of how crime and deviant behaviors occurs and the study of like, you know, what is uh, pros and cons and who is behind it, why it's happening, when it's happening, where it is happening, and how we can control and, um, you know, um, 
provide a meaningful uh, understanding that why crime happens because there are various reasons when a crime happens and that to study of all about crime it's uh, criminology and it's an interdisciplinary field because when we study of crime when we try to understand why it's happening then we try to look for the reasons and motivations so the psychology behind it the sociology behind it and the the so socio economic um uh, situation behind it um we, we look for a lot of we look for finances we look for um technology we look for like cause many things behind it that's why like you know when we talk about study of crime criminology it's a very much umbrella of lot of um various uh, disciplines now if we combine cyber criminology what is cyber criminology so according to dr joy sankar who is the founding father of this terminology called cyber criminology is the study it's the cyber criminology is the study of you know causes of crime which occurs in the cyber space and also its impact um in various uh, physical space um in in the cyber uh, space environment um this term cyber criminology was coined by dr joy sankar in 2007 at that point of time uh, cyber uh, crime was kind of a topic of discussion but cyber criminology was not that so it has been a decade that this um this uh, term has been used but there are a lot of things and lot of room of opportunities of research findings imp um, implementation development of products is lot to do so if you are pursuing a career in cyber criminology there are a lot of room of opportunities for you to discover invent a lot of things because it can mold into your passion of interest that's why like people who pursue cyber criminal that's kind of makes it exciting and very very um, appealing to the audience and especially like uh, new generations who are looking for different um, ways to impact uh, society and change the world so um, again and this I, this cyber criminology is also a kind of amalgamation or kind of a combination of like you know sociology psychology it security computer science um, victimology um, electronics anything you can you mm -hmm. can incorporate with the psychology environment why it is happening when it is happening it also involves uh, behaviors behavioral analysis so when we talk about behavioral analysis if you are in if you as person is working in a business environment financial environment behavior matters um when we talk about victimization in the era of social media uh, every day we see that people try to um harass you online try to like put you down like when i say put you down means like try to like um like hate speech those are like you know victim victimization and that must mm -hmm. not be tolerated that happens in um cyber space and then the study of motivation of cyber attacks why the attacks is happening when this, a cyber criminal is making an attack what is the purpose behind it like mm -hmm. thinking of like in the back like you know why it is happening and those internet crimes because we need motivations to do like nobody like many times motivations are cultural really machially um religion gender um sex lot of things there are motivation behind us has to be understand if we want to reduce that so that's like the representation of cyber criminology happens next um i would like to discuss there are universities and because of you know it has been like uh, 10 years there are certain universities who offers cyber criminology program um these are the major universities um university of alabama rugby university purdue florida state um those these are university arizona western college they provide several programs starting from associate degree to bachelor of science in cyber criminology to masters program in cyber criminology so those criminology programs if you see then it's a combination of computer security computer science and criminal justice uh, courses so it's it provides you fascinating of career in uh, you know cyber forensic digital cyber forensic cyber investigator um loss prevention data loss uh, data analysis lot of um universities like it provides us those kind of um um uh, program when i started and uh, you know i was looking for a cyber criminology program at that point of time there was 
like you know the university i was pursuing there was no cyber criminology program in that university so i studied criminology criminal justice and information systems and i combined together to understand the perspective various perspective of cyber crime and cyber attack why it's happening so i also did the uh, application part which is we talked about pen testing and uh, the code review and other things i also did the data analysis and also try to find out why um the attack happens what is the motivation behind it and what is what should be what is the environment a cyber attackers look for so there are again there are advantages and disadvantages of um, a um, this field so disadvantage and advantage uh, what are the advantage is there are plenty of opportunities for research so you can mold any of your passion any like if you're pursuing advertisement like you know fashion you can mold with criminology because there those related crimes and also internet crimes as well like there are um uh, codes which are un, um the advertisement pretend to be um a legitimate advertisement but it is not uh, try to like you know sneak your personal information um you know pii or financial information um so those are things so it's the the fascinating part of cyber criminology is that like you know you can incorporate with your passion it can incorporate with anything you want to pursue flexibility and diversity of ideas we all love diversity and inclusion in ideas in um also diversity representation when we talk about cyber criminology diversity matters and you see like you know um so for example psychology psychology has like you know very much diversity and inclusion um there are different domains when we incorporate medical um field also incorporate with um criminology because the study of crime with the in the medical field so the more flexibility we have the more diversity and inclusion we incorporate so that's a huge uh, advantage combination of various disciplines which already mentioned and opportunities of qualitative and quantitative research has not done much in this field so there are disadvantages so these are these are the plenty of advantage and disadvantage as well because of you know there is no enough data there is no enough research has not done but the point is that like if you pursue your career in cyber criminology you can pursue your career in a various um demanding because we um whenever you apply for a job people look for various uh, knowledge and various uh, people skills including research analysis including coding skills so in this field you get everything that's why this field is very fascinating and very attractive and very much like um um uh, like everybody should pursue at least like you know for some of their career um the passion so uh so there are theories which is um, application of cr um, criminology theories in cyber security so these are like major theories which um the criminologist and you know sociologist in incorporate into cyber crime um if we go in detail it will be like you know each theories will be like one week of class but i'm just like for your um uh, knowledge purpose i'm letting you know that like um lot of major theories like routine activity theory space transition victim participation theory these theories are incorporated into criminology to study uh, cyber crime and the cyber crime internet crime cyber bullying um, trespassing um, victimization cyber victimization all these theories are applicated and once you apply you can create product you can go for theoretical research you can go for practical research data collections lot of things um so as a cyber security practitioner um these are um like you know when crime happens many times as a infosec um uh, world we always uh, ask question when and what is happening we also must ask questions who are behind it and try to find them and it is very important to find them to set an example of like to um and you know prosecute them under the court of law that why they are doing and why they are doing if the if these are cyber attacks are happening those analysis that what is the motivation behind it are they um attacking because of their state sponsor are they attacking because they are targeting a religious community or minority communities 
um, why it's very important to understand why. Once we try to understand why the behind of a cyber attack, then we can address the why reason then to reduce the cyber attacks as well. So there is enough studies in this area where like uh, going on, but still yet to do a lot of uh, analysis. Um, in this way, like if we combine and study cyber criminology, these are the major um, problems we can um, stop, which is study of like viruses, denial of service attack, identity theft, why it's happening, piracy, child pornography, cyber bullying, cyber stalking, which is happens, uh, it's a kind of victimization, study of victimology of intimate partner violence, um, uh, then uh, identity theft, fraud uh, in financial industry, people are stealing our own uh, information. Those are the major and many more. Um, you know, as I said, like this is the evolving field it has been only 10 plus years and lot of um, lot of room for improvement, research and new things uh, yet to come. So uh, given that, um, this is the overall view of cyber criminology. Like if you want to like um, uh, have questions or want to like hear more about cyber criminology, please do reach out to me. I am available on LinkedIn and um, this is my contact uh, information. And if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie Shri. So you can contact Debbie Shri at the information that she provided. At any time, I encourage you to reach out. Very, very thought provoking and exciting. And next, Medina Ali. Hello, can everyone hear me? Because uh, I can't start the video. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I think it seems we, we, we lost Medina, but we can, great. Okay, hello everyone. And uh, I'm sorry about the, the technical uh, difficulty, but um, Devishri, I appreciate you stepping in. Your topic was very interesting. Um, so again, my name is Medina Ali. I'm the president and CEO of Safe EC Cloud. Uh, we were leading uh, IT managed service company. Uh, Zoe actually is one of our leading consultants on a startup project uh, that involves cybersecurity. So I'm truly honored uh, to present today. So I'm going to share my screen and um, wait a minute, new share and then share 
And we go here. Oh, wait a minute, let me go. So the title of my presentation is the role of managed service providers, MSPs in IT, and why vulnerability disclosure policies are most critical. Um, I um, picked the, um, the, uh, the uh, phishing image for a, a reason. Um, right now, as a managed service provider, uh, trying to protect our clients' uh, systems. One of the, the leading cyber threats is phishing. It's the employees getting uh, very suspicious emails. So I, I wanted to start with that um, image just to, to, to kind of let you all know the impact. Uh, in my presentation, I'm going to be talking about the difference between a vulnerability in IT security and a cyber threat. Uh, I'm going to talk about what is the coordinated vulnerability disclosure, uh, also known as CVD. Uh, what is the cyber tech accord, uh, the organization of that has over 86 signatories, uh, IT organizations throughout the world where we have all come together, where we are trying to um, protect the most vulnerable exposure in IT. And then I'm gonna talk about the important role of managed service providers, MS MSPs in IT security. I often tell uh, potential new clients, if you're gonna go with an IT service provider and they don't have a strategy for IT security, uh, you really don't need to select them as your um, as your MSP. So basically, um, vulnerability in IT security versus a cyber threat. A computer system vulnerability is a flaw or weakness in a system or network that could be exploited to cause damage or allow an attacker to manipulate the system in some way. This is different from a cyber threat and, and, and that while a cyber threat may involve an outside element, computer system vulnerabilities exist on the network access computer um, to begin with. So, so basically, uh, in a nutshell, um, this is something that already exists. This may be, you know, a, a, an application in, in Microsoft. This could be an application uh, in McAfee or any software. Um, you're you're aware you're aware of the potential vulnerability, but how is that reported? How is that disclosed to other software vendors? How is it dis disclosed to government agencies, educational institutions, companies? consumers, end users. Um, so so how, is, how are these vulnerabilities uh, made attention and, uh, and, and made awareness to? So that, that comes in with the whole uh, notion of coordinated vulnerability disclosure, CVD. And basically, someone finds a vulnerability. And CVD can be thought of as an iterative process that begins with someone finding a vulnerability, then repeatedly asking, what should I do with this information and who else should I tell? Until the answers are nothing and no one, but different parties have different perspectives and opinions on how these questions should be answered. The CERT Coordination Center has been coordinating the disclosure of vulnerability reports since its inception in 1988. It is based at the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. And basically, it's a, it's a very organized organization. And I'm going to go more into detail and provide you all with links on how um, these vulnerabilities and these reports are reported. Um, so, so basically, you know, governments, uh, corporations, nonprofits, and educational institutions work together to highlight the importance of these vulnerabilities, and therefore, uh, that's how the Cyber Tech Accord came to be. 
So who is the Cyber Tech Accord? And what I'm going to do real quickly, because uh, I want to make this as interactive as possible, I'm going to uh, take you to their website real quickly. And I am going to, and please forgive me because I am always on Teams. So I am not the best uh, navigator of Zoom, but um, I'm getting there, as they say. So let me take you to where, um, where we have um, the website for, for the, um, for the Cybersecurity Tech Accord. Uh, here it is. So basically, um, the Cyber Tech Accord in which my company, uh, Safe PC Cloud, is a member. This organization, I'm going to click on the about, is it promotes a safer online world by fostering collaboration among global technology companies committed to protecting their customers and users, helping them defend against malicious threats. Now, one of the things that's very important as these are all the signatories and I want to show you all of these list of companies so you can see Cisco, Facebook, Juniper Networks, uh, NetApp. Um, I think they still have me listed as, um, oh, Safe PC Cloud, here we are down here, uh, Salesforce, uh, SAP. Um, so these are right now, you know, DocuSign, Dell, uh, and just so you know, the Cyber Tech Accord is backed by Microsoft Corporation. And uh, we have the Cyber Trust Alliance. So all of these uh, Archive 360, all of these organizations, Avast, have agreed to uh, report a, um, you know, a, a coordinated vulnerability uh, disclosure. And one of the things, as a signatory, as a signatory, Safe PC Cloud and um, I'm still screen sharing, I believe. Um, you should be able to see this, you know, Safe PC's approach to coordinated vulnerability disclosure. So this is where each of us um, as signatories, I'm going right back here, as signatories, we have to, and down right here with the um, uh, Safe PC Cloud, we have to create this on our websites to say that we um, we we want to disclose if there's any vulnerability in the software, hardware, uh, if there's any going on with our websites, um, we use this form down here to report a vulnerability issue. So um, going back, that's the other thing. Let me see. Let me make sure you all can see this. So, okay, let me, okay, good. So this is our, this is, this is our um, website that's dedicated to reporting a coordinated uh, vulnerability uh, disclosure. And so what I say here is that, you know, as a leading managed service provider specializing in data security, data backup, and disaster recover, follows the coordinated vulnerability disclosure, which has been set forth by the Computer Emergency Response Center or, or other coordinators who report to the vendor privately or to a private service that will likewise report to the vendor privately. As an MSP, Safe PC works with several partners to ensure that if there are any vulnerabilities in the software or hardware, we notify our clients immediately and work with our vendors by utilizing the coordinated uh, vulnerability disclosure, CVD. And these are all of our institutional websites. If there's anything suspicious, um, we have a form that um, people can fill out and that information, you know, it, that information is there. So let me go back to um, our presentation. Um, let me go back here. 
So what I want to, to, to say now is, um, you know, the role of the MSP um, is becoming more and more evolved because in the midst of COVID right now, there's so many companies and so many employees working from home. So there's so many vulnerabilities. Uh, and I, I had started with the presentation showing the email phishing, showing the rise, the growth in that. And um, what I think is important um, for um, the, you all, for, for the organization to understand is that uh, traditionally, managed service providers, they came in, they just, you know, they made sure your network was running, they made sure you had antivirus protection, uh, they may have made sure your data was backed up or, or not, but now, so tremendously that every device that touches that network must have some type of secure uh, framework. And what we mean by secure framework, meaning from not just the antivirus, the malware, the intrusion detection, the firewall, uh, also inclusive of uh, the BYLD, which is bring your own uh, device policy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so, why that is so important is to bring your, your own devices because now that employees are working from home, sometimes they're using their personal devices to do work. And that, that makes the network uh, vulnerable. And we're always trying to prevent a cyber security and, and, and that is before, you know, this is, this is an outside hacker uh, before they hit the network. But remember, if they see an organization that's vulnerable, it's a greater risk for a uh, cybersecurity attack. So, you know, real quickly, uh, any questions? Um, I've provided, I'm gonna make some revisions to the, to the presentations because I wanna, uh, make sure you have links to the CyberTech Accord and also to uh, our website and everything. But um, this is my LinkedIn profile. That is my email address. Um, please feel free to email me and definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, but I really would like to kind of have a dialogue. Um, I think that um, Devishri, and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, did an excellent yeah, job are. talking about um, uh, cyber criminology because that is so rampant now uh, because now criminals can't really physically go out and and really um, you know create crime and and really create you know things you know that are there. Um, I just think that it's important that um, that 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 we understand what that is, and kind of correlate that with the, the role of the MSP because our role is to to make sure that we prevent prevent any cyber attack, but but also you know recognize that that cyber attack is also the cyber criminal, you know and um, and I've learned a lot today um, because, again, everything that DeFreeze has been talking about, you know, I'm thinking these, these people are really criminals. And now to know that there's a huge formal study in these, these universities, it's, it's, it's very exciting. So that's my presentation. If anyone has any questions, um, I'm here for further discussion. And thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Medina. So yeah, any questions, definitely reach out to Medina, whether now or afterward, using the contact information she provided. It's very important that we keep these programs going for vulnerability. 
disclosure and coordinating all of these processes and the role of the cyber attack tech accord are similar and keep building upon these mechanisms. I'm, I'm sure that you know all of you who are already out in the field have experienced the importance. Otherwise, you'll continue to learn just how important it is and also going with who is out there, what's going on and what is relevant in the world to shape the current scene of cyber criminology and vulnerabilities that are more likely to be explo exploited given circumstances. Mm -hmm. So any questions or? And we'll be here, the, the WIA committee and myself in general, Medina, okay. Devi Shri, um, just keep us all posted with any suggestions. I mean, th this is exactly why we're a community so that we can reach out when we have specific questions, specific contributions and offerings and commentary on the topics keep building upon each other and the world of infosec yeah um if you would like to reach out and research and then you know where to start because many times when we are pursuing cybersecurity, um you know we are in the middle of the career or